Okay, so it's time to finally learn how to insert data to our database. Let's start everything by adding a new class to our project. Let's hit new, Kotlin class, select data class and call it up user request. It will be used to deserialize the JSON payload that will be sending to our endpoint. Let's add two fields, name and email. I would like the identifier to be populated automatically so we don't see it right here. As the next step, let's go to the app user controller and this time let's use post mapping users function will be called create user. In order to bind the JSON to the very spe to the specific class, we have to use request body annotation and specify as an argument app user request. As a result, I would like to see the mono with app user of the created instance created row to be returned here, app user service, create user, and we would like to pass app user request. As we can see, this is highlighted in, this is marked with a red color because there is no such a function. And right here, here's the pro, pro tip. Let's hit Alt, Enter, and right here, select create member function, which will automatically generate this code, which I find really convenient in everyday life. At the next step, let's go with app user repository and this time use save method. Nevertheless, we can see that this requires us the app user class to be uh, presented. So what I will have to do will be create a new object of app user. This time specifying only for the name app user request name and for the email the value passed inside the request object for the email. Again, this time let's hit Shift plus F10 and restart our application. In the meantime, I'll go to Postman and prepare a new request. So similarly, this will be localhost slash API slash users. Nevertheless, we have to change the method to post. If I hit send with this, I'll get 400 bad requests because the request body is missing. To change that, let's navigate here, row, specify JSON and the values that we would like to have. New name and as the email, new at codercy.com. When I hit send now, I should see that the new object with new identifier is returned. As we previously entered two times uh, the record and we haven't increased the counter inside PostgreSQL, you might encounter twice the error. So try to do it three times. Nevertheless, let's use maybe the new endpoint, hit for and we can see that the user is returned. And when I hit for all users, we can see that this is still working correctly. Nevertheless, if you remember correctly, when I was creating the SQL script, I said that I would like the email to be the unique value. Let's see what, what will happen now. 500 internal error, and we can see that the message should not be presented to the user this way. Moreover, I believe that firstly, we should verify whether the user with a given email exists. So let's get back to IntelliJ. And let's modify create user function a bit. First of all, I would like this, I would like the user repository to find by email and let's go with the app request email string. Similarly, let's hit alt enter, create abstract function, email string, returning mono with app user. What we see here is one of the coolest thing in Spring Data JPA, which means 
that by specifying the appropriate function name, right here the method, uh, the appropriate method name, it will be translated to a valid SQL query. A method, this is called a derived query method in Spring Data JPA, and this one will be translated to uh, find by the exact value of this email. If you would like to see what exactly this is and how this works in Spring Data JPA, let me know in the comment section and I will create a new blog post for that. Nevertheless, let's get back to our user service right here. What should happen if we find the user? Well, let's hit flat map, mono, error, and right here it would be great to have a new error with generic bad request exceptions. So let's go to model, error, with control plus D you can duplicate that, which is also pretty convenient and useful. Nevertheless, I would like to change the response status to bad request and the name will be bad request exception. This class we'll use in our service. So let's get back to our service. Mono error, bad request exception, user with email. Now let's inject the email. So app user request email already exists. Nevertheless, if the mono is empty, so switch if empty, then we would like to save this and that, do not throw anything and just work out as it should be working. As we can see right here, we will have to specify the returning of the, uh, the type return so that it will be working. Now let's run once again our application and what we should expect is 400 bad requests with appropriate message. Let's get back to our postman and let's hit send once again. And this is correct. We are getting the appropriate message. In the next video, I will show you how to update users.